Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of Scion of the Dark House, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition gothic horror podcast. I have um, found the lines and veils of each of our players. So if there's anything that might put you on edge or set you off, such as violence, blood, gore, body horror, cosmic horror, or other things, Please take a break. Your support means a lot to us, but so does your mental health. So where we left our intrepid party last time was they were on their way to cash a check at the bank, this new fangled technology that they didn't quite know what to do with. After getting 5,000 gold and deciding to immediately spend it at various interesting shops and then get drunk, they visited Percy's family, where they had a few difficult discussions before heading back to the downed falcon and falling asleep. They woke up the next morning, finding nothing amiss, nothing awry, and went to the estate, the shadowy, strange estate that Percy had been given via various means. They found the carriage house of which they found the furniture was not all what it appeared to be. And after a vicious attack, decided that it was probably a good time to take a long rest. And so having woken up bright and early in the morning, but sadly, with no breakfast in an incredibly <laughs> dusty house filled with leaves, pollen, dusty furniture, and probably some disgusting, smelly giblets of stuff you don't want to touch. We come back to our party. So what are you all doing? Are we sure it's not edible? Lark's just, he has a <laughs> oaking oh my God. from the furniture. You know what I mean. Be my guest. My sentiments exactly. I'm starving. I would literally kill a pigeon for a pigeon right now. <laughs> we really should have packed more, like, supplies for this. <laughs> well, uh, town isn't that far away if we need to make a pit stop. But, um... I do have a piece of bread. Oh, they probably have various, maybe not much, but some, maybe some trail mix. Um, tomorrow I'll, I'll prepare the conjure food and water spell. Um, like, you like my character has, my character traveled like from across the desert. I, I always have something to eat. Um... But uh, aside from our rumbling tummies, um, uh, how should we approach this? I think the carriage house is relatively safe enough for now. Um, what are if I don't we don't have the map like visually? Uh, what what's like the next closest thing? There is an intersection. Uh, if you were to go to the right you would end up at the chapel and the graveyard. And then continuing on, you would hit the gardens and the hedge maze and then up to the house. If you headed to the left, you would go by the lake house and then up to the stables and around the lake towards the house and hit the vineyards. Gotcha. Mm, where there might be wine. Are you really gonna drink wine from this place? What? Yeah, we've been it's here alcohol. for like less than a day. The first place we went to already had shit crawling around in it. Um, yeah, so all the more reason to drink. To the right, uh, the, the chapel will be coming up. To the left, the lake house. Um, <sighs> the left will take us on a sort of a roundabout way to the house. The, the right will be more direct. Yeah, but the left-hand path has wine, so. <laughs> um, I, I, Just throwing I, that out there. I have a, I, I'm 
curious about the chapel at the very least as a, a person of faith myself. Um, <coughs> Are we going to pretend well, I mean, the graveyard in front of it probably doesn't have its own infestation currently? Oh, it most certainly does. Mm, Let's yeah, just yeah. assume I've already mentally scouted that and gotten a <laughs> shitload of blips. <laughs> You have gotten a shitload of blips. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, it's your house, so. I mean, there's bound to be. There's bound to be stuff everywhere. Right. So, I mean, I guess I don't know. Quick, quickest route to the house and get this done. Wine be damned, though it pains me. <laughs> um. Uh, for now, I, I think I'd, I'd like to start with the chapel. We, we can head the other way if we feel like afterwards. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'll start directing us to the chapel then. So you end up at the crossroads. Oh my goodness, where did all of my notes for this place go? Good. Um, so you head in the direction of the chapel. It is a bit of a walk through the woods, I say, flipping furiously through my notes. Um, ah, here it is. And after a while, you do finally start hearing bugs. No birds yet, but mm -hmm. bugs. And you come to where the grounds of the chapel are. The chapel is at the side of the road, grown over, but it is on the tree line. And beyond it are vast arrays of headstones and monuments. There is also a large tree growing. And it appears to be dead, the bark white. And you are now at the chapel. And I have to make sure I have a book pulled because reasons. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> can I primeval awareness to see if I get any specifics like from inside of there? Um, yes, there is something that gives a very strong blip underneath the chapel. Some of the above ground mausoleums give some pretty powerful blips. Um, but most of the graves do give blips, but they are weak. Mm -hmm. There is definitely stuff here. Okay, so, um, you know, public service announcement, everyone, undead nasties uh, in the mausoleums, and one real big one right underneath the chapel. So, just uh, not particularly surprised there. Nope. Same. It seems to be to see a place of worship fall into such evils. Um, should we start clearing out the mausoleums? I mean, as good an idea as any. I'm just hoping for something that's um, a little less spectral than the last time I had a real big radar ping, because, you know, I got a bow and I got a set of claws. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's the hope, isn't it? Uh, Laura, you're not picking up any any fairy ban banshee nonsense. Uh, I can I make a check for anything like that? It's not I mean, <laughs> sure. I don't know what you would make. Um, I guess you can make a nature check. Okay, this is fine. Oh, uh, I might see. have to pull 
with a 12 on a nature check for me to be like, is there any fairy bullshit? Probably not. <laughs> no, doesn't seem to be, at least not in this immediate area. Yep. Yeah, if we were going to discover what sort of nasty plagued these grounds, then primeval awareness would have done it, but I got nothing. I don't see hide nor hair of any of my kind anywhere nearby. In short, well, be ready for anything. <laughs> oh god, I need to pull more books. Um, okay, well, where would you all like to start searching? I guess the mausoleum. Okay. All right, so a lot of these mausoleums are covered in ivy. Age has worn the stone down so that you can't see the name. The various angels and other bas-reliefs placed and carved delicately into the stone has been worn away to where these things don't even have faces anymore and their hands look like oven mitts. These things are old. The Kritzvalds have lived in this house for generations, and it took generations to build. There are a lot of them here. Is there any specific one in particular that you would like to move towards? Fearless leader. I mean, you're, you're the one that can sense the undead through walls. Yeah, they're behind all of the walls. Well, I guess we'll start with the closest one then. <laughs> um, and uh, I will walk up to the, the closest mausoleum. You push open the door and surprisingly it does open. This one has a, um, a lot of ivy inside of it, growing across the ceiling and down across the walls. The walls have an indentation in them, a long rectangle where one might put candles or offerings. And there's an indentation in the floor where there should be a stone sarcophagus, but there is not. At the other end, there is an urn covered in corrosion, sitting in an alcove. Arthur, this was definitely a mausoleum that you found a relatively powerful blip behind. Excellent. But there seems to be nothing in it. Can I use my cleric ability that I've never used before, Eyes of the Grave, um, which let me uh, sense the presence of undead within 60 feet of me as long as they're not under full cover or protected by divination magic. Under full cover. You don't see anything. <laughs> Wonderful. My ability is just a worse version of, of <laughs> Arthur's ability. Mark's going to look at Arthur and be like, are you sure something's in here? Can I, like, tell where it, well, yes, it, like, it, not can I tell, it, where's it at, like, in here, the back before wall. we make moves, back wall, yeah. it's behind the back wall. Okay, so, um, hmm. Like, the back wall is in, like, the urn in the back wall, or the back wall? Around that area. Yep, yep, so, uh, right, right there, that's. That's it. So, um, we just prepare a bit of a team attack here then. <laughs> just chuck whatever we have at that urn. <laughs> Can I identify the urn? I mean, if you'd like. Don't you have like, to get close to it for that? Yes, it is you do urn. have to touch it. Ugh. Oh, God, no, don't touch it. Should we just destroy it? Can we just throw back it? here from the entrance? Yes. Everyone just throw a spell at it. <laughs> Can I just oh, burn with my breath attack? All right, Eldritch Blast it is. Okay. <laughs> when, when in doubt, 
Let the fairy freak out. <laughs> you don't have to use a spell slot for that, right? No, it's a cantrip. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. So that is a 23 and a 15. Yeah, that hits the urn. Um, 18 force damage. Yeah, you blast the urn. It shatters. Ash goes everywhere and kicks up a plume. And nothing. Okay. Who wants to break down the wall? Um, Because I certainly don't have the strength to do it. (laughs) At least having returned to my normal size. Do any of us have the strength to do it? Yeah, don't, don't, don't worry, Arthur. If we need to, I can pump you up again. You know, I do so love being pumped up. <laughs> um. All right. Well, can we just kick it down or something? It's old. I I want to cast protection from evil and good on myself, and I will try to go in and, and break it down. All right, remind me what protection from good and evil does. Um, undead is one of the listed things that it protects you from. And uh-huh. uh, uh, protection against all benefits, creatures uh, of that type of a disadvantage of attack roll against this target, and this target cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. All right. Wow. Um, and yeah, I'll walk into the mausoleum, and I'm just like behind the wall back here. <laughs> yep. That's the spot. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll just a big take, one. take out my, my mace and just try to hit it really hard. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say that you don't need to give me an attack roll, but give me a uh, roll damage. Okay. You know, I want to see if you can break down the wall. I, uh, uh, I had a thought but it wasn't until after you swung the mace, so. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I rolled a full on that. So that's, I, and I had my strength the mace damage. Mm-hmm. Um, and do I have proficiency in maces? I think you do. Okay, so you, sorry, I, I, I don't do weapons a lot. You add your proficiency and your strength to the damage total, right? I don't think you add your proficiency, but no, okay, you strength. don't add the proficiency, uh, just the strength. Plus three to strength, that's nine damage. I mean, you take a chunk out of the wall. Okay, hold it, hold, hold it, hold it. You told me behind the wall. <laughs> yes, I did say it was behind the wall, but here's the thing. It's not doing anything right now. Can't just blast so, it? So, but to hold the metaphorical phone that hasn't been invented yet, <laughs> probably. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying is nothing's trying to attack us. And whatever's causing all the undead is probably in the house. So what are we doing? Uh, okay, I, I don't know. I thought we'd take out the small fries for the big one. Um, but Maybe let's you want to learn it. see if it's sort of a we kill the big one and the rest like flee or something? That was kind of my theory, maybe. Okay, <laughs> um, I- sure. Uh, yeah, I guess we can... I'll just walk out. Fine, all right. Uh, Arthur, remind me of your AC again. My AC? 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motherfucker. (laughs) Above game. No. No. Oh. Oh, actually. Make me three constitution saving throws. Me? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. 13. Uh huh. 12. Uh huh. <laughs> 20. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Everybody else roll a perception check. Cool. 
18. Do you want me to roll for Jazz too? Yes. Okay. I got a uh, keen smell or just straight perception? Let's do keen smell. Okay. I only got a seven. So 20 for Percy? 21. 21. Rarick got 18. 18. And 14 for Jazz. All right. You sense from Jasmine that she smells death around you. Percy. Around Arthur's neck, there are very, very tiny red dots forming. Like something very small and invisible is biting him or something? Possibly. The air around him is also turning a tiny bit pink. Uh, okay. Rarick, uh, you uh, see the dots, but you do not see the pink. What's that? <laughs> Uh, Arthur, Arthur, are you? You're bleeding. What? Is, <laughs> I'm not moving. Have... I'm not moving. I feel like I shouldn't be moving. Um, I, I guess I, I don't see anything I can like attack here, right? Can I stick like a swing in the air in front of him? Um, sure. Make me an attack roll. Uh, shit. Okay. Uh, that is a. 17. Yeah, roll damage. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's seven damage. All right. And your mace is not magical, is it? No. All right. You know, because reasons. <laughs> okay. Uh... Oh my goodness. We'll just go to that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. You, as you pass your mace through the air, the air gives a little resistance. There's something there. So, um, I, I mean, I would know it, is this a type of undead? Um, you know, I would, I would know that. Would you? Yeah. Primeval <laughs> awareness. Is it still up? Uh, yeah, I only have to concentrate on it for one minute. Well, it's definitely been longer than one minute since you popped it last. Are you going to? Yeah, I want to try for it again. I was going to ask uh, in uh, intelligence check to see if I know, like, if I knew it was undead, intelligence check to see if I knew info about what's happening right now, this thing. Ah, okay. Well, yeah. um, I'm assuming you pop your primeval awareness again. Yeah, there's something directly around your head. Super. And you can make that intelligence check now. Also make me another constitution saving throw, please. Oh my God. Okay, well, intelligence check was a 13. Con save is, I can't see the die. Oh, seven. Yeah, that's that's not great. All right. Um, it's definitely something incorporeal. Um, yeah. If it was in an urn, that probably means that it was created by something dying as in an undead dying. And this is some sort of uh, manifestation of the necromantic magic that is still sticking around. Yum -o. It's usually a more powerful undead, like, like burning a zombie wouldn't cause this. This yeah. is like a white, a vampire, a lich, something powerful that has died and has been cremated and enough of its essence has stuck around Something's happening. Yummy. Okay. Need needs help. All I have are physical <laughs> weapons, and oh. something is trying to eat me. Is, so. it, is it visible enough to like actually attack at this point, or no? I would say yes. There are tendrils of red, almost like smoke, 
they're still kind of pink and pale, but they're wafting off of Arthur and beginning to create this visible, almost smoke cloud around him. Mm, yummy. Um, I'm here to tell him I'm gonna Eldritch Blast it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you may Eldritch Blast this thing. Not moving. Uh, that's a 12 and a 19 to hit. 19 hits. I hope so. Um, that's going to be 14. Or no, sorry. Uh, that's 10 force damage. Yeah, you blast this thing and it you see something in the air fizzle as it and then reforms. And we are going to go into initiative. Um, Not that I'll be able to. And actually, before that, Arthur, make me another constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, Initiative was a 12, by the way. Con save is 11. Uh, and okay. Con All right. Fires one, by the way, so not having a great time <laughs> with these wolves here. Um, okay. So, Arthur, as we move into initiative, this is information you need to know. You are down 14 hit points. Your hit point maximum is also down 14. All okay. right. Uh, can I put like a negative on my temp HP? Let me see if it'll let me do that. All right. It's not so going to let me override. I'll just have to remember it. Okay. I have it written down. Yay. So who got what? Uh, I got a 20. I got a 12. 12. What did Rarick get? 14. 14. And Lark? Uh, dirty 20. All right. Uh, so first up is either uh, Percy or Lark. Uh, you want to go first? <laughs> I, if you want, I can go first. Uh, sure. Somebody blast this fucking thing. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you ready? <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my free fairy magic of the day, but I'm not gonna do it on enlarge reduce. I'm gonna use it on a fairy fire mm-hmm. to try to make this thing more easily visible for everybody. Uh, so I'm gonna aim it in such a way that it won't hit us, but it should hit this cloud. Can I get a deck saving throw from it? Yes. Oh my God. The six Excuse obviously me. fails. Okay. Uh, so it's going to light up like, we'll say we'll, it's going to light up orange as the f- little like sparks of fairy magic stick to it, like coating it in, I guess, what looks like little cinders. Yeah. It's actually a pretty big cloud. Oh, it would probably... oh God, it's bigger than I thought. <laughs> yes. It is surprisingly large. Do you it guys is see all that? Probably about the size of a six foot tall man, Ooh. but a smoke cloud that has attached itself to Arthur. I'm going to fly a little bit further away from Arthur. Sorry, bud. Oh and my I'm going to use, use my bonus action to quicken an Eldritch Blast at it. So, because of fairy fire, we all have advantage on attack rolls against it. Yes. Sweet. Uh, oh, that's uh, nice. Eight, eight, nine, or... Okay, these are better. Uh, so, that's going to be a dirty 20 and a 26 to hit. Both hit. And that's going to be 24 damage. 
Ooh. Yeah, you blast this thing and the smoke fizzles. You see the fairy fire shrink down as this thing burns away and it swirls angrily, but it can't make any noise. And that is the end of your turn, I'm assuming. This thing is significantly reduced and up is Percy. Wonderful. Um... Well, the only real magical attack I have for it right now is guiding bolts. So I'll do a guiding bolt on it, and I want to kind of—I want to—I want to step in front of everybody as much as I can since I have the protection from good and evil on, on me right now. Um, so I'll make a spell attack. Way add to that. That's gonna be a fifteen. Yep, that hits. Sweet. Guiding bolt. I think it's 4d6 at first level. It's an insane spell. Yeah, she's pretty good. <laughs> F, G, G, no, G was G. <laughs> Guiding bolt. Yeah, 4d6. You were correct. <laughs> um, I know my spells. Six, the three, the three, the six. So that is uh, eighteen damage. You fling out this guiding bolt, and it sails through this cloud, this strange cloud, and the radiance causes the rest of it to fizzle out. Lark, you'd be aware that there is nothing for the spell to target anymore, and so the spell ends, and you are out of initiative. Oh, thank Ooh. God. <laughs> Ooh. I was like, I was waiting for my turn. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you all right, Arthur? I think so. A little worse for wear, but other than that, I mean, I'm still breathing. Well, um, one mausoleum down. Uh, should we try to go to the chapel now? Mm-hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe. Could I get, could I get some healing? Oh, actually, um, I'm at my, I'm at my. If my max HP was reduced, I'm at my max right now. So balls. Okay, I'm assuming have... that resets at next long rest. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't have remove curse right now, but I can prepare that in the morning and see if that'll help out if it doesn't cure naturally. Ah, uh, great. Okay. Um. Yeah. I guess chapel. It is. So are we not busting through the wall? I don't think that will be necessary at this point. <laughs> so cool. looks. Let me flip to there it is. Okay. What's that thing anyway? So you are going into the chapel? Yeah. Yes. Uh, before we enter the chapel, I'm gonna convert a small spot into sorcery point. You can certainly do that. Just just in case. Yes. Since that fairy fire was free anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. So as you enter the chapel, the stained glass windows are a lot clearer now from the inside, since there was a buildup on the outside. There are beautiful columns in this building, and at the place right in front of the altar, there is a baptismal font. There are some pews, but the wood has aged horribly, and they are stacks of wood on the floor as they've clearly broken and fallen apart. 
Percy, you would instantly recognize from the statues and iconography that this is dedicated to two separate saints. It is dedicated to Saint Cyrus, who is the patron of the home, and to Saint Adeline, who is the patron saint of familial love. Um, the stained glass windows seem to have a uh, a bit of a narrative to them. Um, it is a, oh my God, let me read my notes real fast. So there is a woman who is the daughter of a baker and she would oftentimes take the leftover bread to feed the poor who impressed a nobleman. The nobleman began to see her, and because of that, he got kicked out of his home. Um, soon the nobleman's father died, and you see one of the windows where the nobleman is uh, chopping down his family tree and it is implied through various iconography and images that the nobleman took his wife's last name instead of having his wife take his. And the stained glass window in the back is them standing together beneath um, St. Adeline and St. Cyrus presiding over a marriage ceremony. Um, the baptismal font at the front is dedicated um, to the birth of Marigold Kritzwald, this, the daughter of Chastity Kritzwald and Elwind Ventru. And the chapel was also built in this honor 700 years earlier. This is also apparently the first building built of the Kritzwald estate, according to a plaque. And as of the moment, that is all you see. Cool. See, Percy definitely is sort of like taken aback looking to like wandering and touching the remnants of the pews, looking at the remnants of his ancestors. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of history here. Oh, history check. <laughs> um. Just gonna whisper to Arthur, isn't this infested with a dangerous undead somewhere? Yeah, they kind of all are. <laughs> a personal term, but I got, said it was below us, right? Mm -hmm. So, really quick, above game. Um, uh, this is a, a DM call thing. Mm -hmm. Primeval awareness is meant to tell me what sort of undead and like all kinds of things, which I recognize is a little bit OP. So for the purposes of story, I have not been pressing it. Okay. So I'm just leaving that in your court um, and yeah. carrying on with. I feel yeah. like that would give a bit too much information. I feel like yeah. stronger blips for more powerful things. Cool yeah. It. Okay. But yep. you definitely so, sensed yeah. a strong blip underneath the chapel, but you yep. do not Straight see underneath. any entrance to this and just the one just the one just the one which doesn't always mean better yeah mm -hmm. yay should we look for a way down um i suppose uh can we maybe investigation check to place See yes if we can find a way towards you can make an investigation in check I mean, mine's going to be poop, but <laughs> seven. 
There's a lot it of stonework here. Either. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. Kind of hard to tell the difference between what is and what is not what. Yeah, super. That's kind of what I felt. Yeah, mine was only an 11. So I mean, I what, kind, I'm gonna... what check are we making? Investigation. Investigation. Oh, mm, mine was six. Mine was all six. <laughs> Oh. We all suck in investigation. I knew I should have taken proficiency in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you all look all over the place. There is no indication of any place that would be an entrance to when, something when, underneath. When we were outside, did I did I notice like a one of those external basement entrance things? No. Nope. There seems to be no external anything. Um, well, either this chapel was built over top of whatever this thing was, or there's a secret entrance that we don't know about. So, so far as I can tell, our options are find whatever secret entrance we haven't been able to find so far, or Blast our way through the floor before that thing decides to come up here and get us. Blast it. <laughs> That's always your vote. <laughs> yeah. For, for, a, for a diviner, you're very violent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of divination. <laughs> Is someone going to use their portents? Sure. How do I use that? Well, it would be your reaction to use it. Um, and then you just, that's your role. That's what the role is. The two and roles. you can use it for anything. I'm still very confused. Is that the two things that I roll? Yes. yes. You yeah, can use okay. one of them, but then it's it's gone. Mm -hmm. You can roll them each long rest. Ooh, so I have a 15 and a 20. I'll use... 20. <laughs> all right. For the in all right. So you kind of take a moment to look around. And it strikes you as you as you look. Typically, when somebody wants to hide something, they put something on top of it. The altar is the only thing that the would top. be heavy enough and large enough to hide a door. It's probably under the altar. Hmm. Well, I'm probably not under the altar, guys. Ooh, I love destroying church property. Should I burn this? It is a mm -hmm. giant stone block. Um, <laughs> good luck. Can we just push it? <laughs> can we, we can all do it. <laughs> I mean, maybe all of us together can. <laughs> yeah, maybe if we all push together, we can move it. <laughs> do you want like strength checks or? Uh, well, as you approach the altar with the express intent uh, to push it, Great. the stained glass window in the back glows, casting mm, like that. a very holy looking light down on the ground before it shatters and the pieces hover in the air for a moment. And some of them gather and they create this brilliant looking night, a three dimensional, almost glass sculpture of a night made out of brilliant, beautiful stained glass as the window forms back together and it steps in front of the altar, holds up its shield, readies its sword, and then just stands there protectively in front of the altar. So hmm. the church doesn't want us to go down there. Yep, the which hell? probably means we should. Is it is the church stopping this thing from escaping? I mean, I mean, ah, fuck you, let's, let's kill the knight. <laughs> um, Great, okay. 
I, you, mm. Can I perception check that thing before somebody decides to blast it? <laughs> sure. You can or, perception or check it. Insight? Or, insight? Yeah. Like, see if yeah. I can get, like, it's five. I will still I write down initiative order just in case. Okay. And that insight check was a 10, so. I mean, from its pose, it's definitely a defensive pose. It is not an offensive pose. You don't go into battle with your shield in front of you and your sword behind you unless you are intending on tanking blows or pushing someone back. It is definitely a protective pose. So what happens if we take our hands off the altar? You have not made it to the altar. This thing is in front of the altar. We just started walking towards it. Huh. I think it'll only attack if we attack it. That's that's the impression I'm getting. It's like a trick of magic, or if it's actually look at a kitty. Hey, does this at night? Did someone prepare dispel magic? Let's try that. Nope. You already (laughs) know I don't have no magic. Let's detect good and evil. <laughs> well, I guess we're fighting it then. <laughs> All right, fine. Can we like go to the altar first, see if it'll move? It's in the way. Can we go around it? <laughs> you sure can I, try, kid. I highly doubt it. <laughs> okay. I guess we're rolling initiative then. Yeah. Sure. Here we go. Super. 19. Oops, wow. I forgot my advantage. So that I can get my dice and this way doesn't fall. Also 19. Oh my goodness. I got a 17. I got a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Well, plus two. Ooh, that means Lark, you go first. When in doubt, Eldritch Blast. Two yes. Bees. Uh oh, shit! One's a nat one. Oof. And the other one is a seventeen. The seventeen hits. <sighs> Ooh, that's only five. That's literally one. Uh, but I get to add my charisma modifier to my damage, so five force damage. You blast at this thing, and it hits its shoulder. The glass shatters, and then seems to slow motion keep floating away. Would you like to do anything else? Oh, uh, mm, I mean, I feel like the the just I feel like it's probably better to save the big guns for whatever's underneath the altar. So I think that'll be Lark's just gonna like fly upwards and away from everybody else in case any AOE bullshit gets thrown at everybody else. So however tall this fucking chapel is, I'm 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 roof. I'm wafting around the it's roof. Probably right. twenty feet tall. So next up is a three-way tie between the Stained Glass Knight, Rarick, and Arthur. Do you want us to roll again to break the tie? uh, No, because monsters always go after players, and we will decide by dexterity score. Oh, that'll be me. Yeah. Yeah. My I have max decks. Ooh. Okay. So yeah, right. Um, okay. Well, uh I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my trusty hunter's mark and longbow. Mm-hmm. So advantage because he hasn't acted. 21 to hit. 
Ooh, that definitely hits. Okay. And then two of these and one of these. And that'll be 19 damage. Woof. Yikes. You release your arrow and it goes straight through the shield and through the chest plate, causing a massive um, explosion of glass that begins to move in slow motion. But it is still holding up its shield barely together. So now it is Rarick's turn. Jazz? Oh, Jasmine. Uh, can I go for a pounce? Uh, Tw- uh, sure. 20, 20 feet. Yes. Do we have that? Okay. Sure. So we will go for, wait, pounce is a, I want to say it's a claw attack. Yes. And then the bite is the bonus. Okay. So pounce is claw. So that is a, nope, that's a 12. I want the 20. Thank you. That is a 16 to hit. Yep. That hits. Okay. So uh, I need a strength check, but let me roll your damage. Wait a minute. That's not a D6. It's a D4. There we go. D4. Okay. Claw damage is eight. Mm -hmm. And DC 12 for strength. It rolled a 13, so a 14. Okay. And it stays upright. As she pounces towards him, the claw is raking down the shield, shattering the glass, sending it flying in slow motion as he is still slow motion exploding. Can I use the rest of her movement speed to run back? Uh, he will get an attack of opportunity. Opportunity attack. Yep, I'm totally cool with it. All right. And he probably whiffs with a nine. Correct. Yep. He swings his sword, but it seems like the sword had been hit by something and shattered a bit, and so the pieces don't quite line up as he swings it and Jasmine manages to get away, but he is still standing. Rarick, it is now your turn. This thing is basically glass shards floating and no longer a knight sculpture, but it is still holding together. What would you like to do? Firebolt. Roll an attack roll. Melt it. 13. That is just enough. Okay. So roll damage, which I believe is 2d10 now. One second. 17 total. You hurl this bolt of fire and hit it in the helmet. The helmet shatters. And for a moment, you think it's still together. And then the light that it seems to be shining out blinks out and the glass pieces fall to the ground. You have defeated whatever this thing is. And the chapel lays silent again, the light fading and darkness taking its place once again. Why do I feel like we shouldn't have like shattered that guy? I don't know, too late for regrets. I mean, if we destroyed it that easily, how much help could it have been? <laughs> oh. Um, what are the odds so, the other windows turn into weird nights too? <laughs> I think it was just the one. I hope so. That would just be that would just be too much. So um on to the big nasty that's hiding under that altar. Yeah. Let's... Super. <laughs> so yeah, we go over to the altar yeah. and try to push it. All right, strength check. Oh wait, nope. Yes, not twenty. <laughs> Ooh, 
I got a and my strength is poop, so. I got a three, but I want to use my <laughs> other my portent. Yes. All right. So, yes, you manage to push this altar. It grinds against the stone. And below you is a square staircase descending. The ceiling is rather low on it. And just as you guys stand there for a moment and stare at it, knowing that there is something down there, something bolts out of the darkness up to the very top of the steps. Lovely. And then it stops as if it is smacked into a pane of glass. It is a horrible looking, pale, humanoid figure, bald, long claws, horrible mangled teeth, thin, emaciated. It screams as it claws for a moment at this barrier that you realize, Percy, is a hallow spell that is, seems to cover the base of the church, but not go any farther down. Mm -hmm. In Should fear, we put it, it back? then, it screams <laughs> and then belches a 15 foot cone of blood before turning and bolting back down, screaming and shrieking into the darkness. I need everybody except for Lark, who I think is safely out of the way, uh, okay, to make a constitution that. saving throw. Yeah, I just it's blinked disgusting. the hell out of there. I'm good at those. Nope. You did not have enough time. This thing just surprised you. I got an 18. Um, what did Barrett get? 17. 17. Okay, so Arthur, you did not succeed. Of course I didn't. <laughs> um, I need a bunch of D8s. Do, 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 oh, do. God. Where is my other D8? It is missing. I don't know why it is missing. Oh, nope. I was looking at the wrong set. Okay. Oh. All right, so Arthur, you take 16 points of necrotic damage. The rest of you take eight, except for Lark. Um, also, Arthur, you feel a bit sick and the blood all over you seems to sting a bit. Right. Okay. Super. I'm like, oh my god. Okay, I, I like take out my healer's kit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start bandaging Arthur up, um, which restores. Interestingly, uh, it seems nothing's helping. Oh, <laughs> Great. well, so it, it doesn't heal him at all. <laughs> no, the skin still bubbles and blisters and bleeds. And nothing you do seems to stop that. Oh, dear God. Okay. I'm dying. I'm she dying. Home. <laughs> and I didn't even get any wine. I knew we should have gone to the <laughs> He says, like, like choking. Spreading? It is not spreading. Okay, uh, you're not dying, but it is resisting um, being treated. I think I would uh, know if I was dying. But right. Thanks. Um, a vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, that thing can't enter the hallowed ground here. Um, yeah, so maybe we want to put the altar back. I mean, uh, you know, one of you. So, uh, is that the group consensus, or do we want to go yeah. after it? Yeah. What consensus my ass? That thing just spit acid all over me. Blood um, acid. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll try to push the altar back. <laughs> Strength check. 
Okay. God damn it. Okay, that's an unnatural 20. Oh, another anybody... 17. Oh, okay. So it takes a little bit longer than it did to push it off, but you push it back over top of the entrance and just pretend like nothing ever happened. You know, except for my ruined face. Oh my God, it's pretty face. <laughs> There's a second time. Can I make a medicine check to see if like, if I think it's, it was just the fact that I was using non-magical healing before. Uh, yeah, make me a medicine check. And I have very good medicine. Is it 24? Inspecting him, it seems like whatever is happening has stopped. The skin has not begun, has not blistered any farther, and there does not seem to be any additional blood leaking out. Okay. What's the uh, word, Doc? Uh, it seems... Uh, well, it, it should be manageable. Um, uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll cast secure wounds on him. Go ahead. You do get hit points back. Wonderful. Let me just scroll back up to see how many hit points that is. Secure wounds is 1d8. How many, how many second level spells left? I have. I'm upcasted for you. Oh, thank God. Yeah, sure. I have enough. I'll, I'll do a second level, so it's two to eight. Let's say six and a five. Eleven plus my plus my spell casting ability modifier. So that's fifteen. Uh, fifteen hit points recovered. Okay. I'm good. Do you recognize what kind of undead that thing was? I will say it definitely looked vampiric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the blood was a good indicator. Okay. Well, um, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. Um, and and go where? I think. I think everywhere is going to be just about as bad. Yeah. You can rest. Um, didn't need the reminder. Um, I mean, we may as well carry on. <laughs> All right. Um, we can uh, progress towards the house then. where I can only re be assured that it will only get worse from here. <laughs> I was... Isn't the... Um, I look like fucking Dr. Evil petting <laughs> over here. Uh, and don't you suppose things are just going to get worse the closer we get to the house itself? 100%, yes. Yeah. Why don't we check the other outbuildings first? Um, yeah, there's, there should be a few things on the way to the house. Um, <clears throat> should we? Yay. I mean, I mean those are all right. We can either un uncover the vampire again and try to kill it, or we can go uncover something else and try to kill I'm that. I don't can, go, can we still go back to the lake and get wine if you want wine? Uh, yeah, wine sounds fucking great right now, but we're kind of already knee deep. So and, and there's going to be okay. something in the vineyard as well. <laughs> like <laughs> obviously. Probably yeah. some kind of horrible monster that's destroyed all the wine anyway. That's <laughs> terrible. That's highly likely, kind. yes. No, no. You did point point us where you'd like to go, Percy. I mean, we're here for you, so I mean I I, I hate to be to bearer of bad news here but I, I I I am of the mind maybe we should deal with what's under the chapel um, oh I hate you <laughs> it's 
I mean, like, like Laura said, it's only going to get worse from here. Like this is, you know, it's intimidating, but if we let this scare us off, what we might as well just give up now. It's, it's trapped down there. It can't get out. Do you suppose we have the strength to fight it, though? Um, I'm as recovered as I'm going to get today. So. I say, let's do it. Dear God. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Um, Sometimes I hate democracy. Do we think, I mean, Arthur, you're the probably the most knowledgeable about what this creature could be. Do we think it dislikes the light? I, I do have the daylight spell prepared. Intelligence check? Sure. Nope, not that one. Oh, you dick. <laughs> Double fives. <laughs> so, you know, just five super well it does appear to be vampiric it probably doesn't like sunlight fair enough all right well I, i'll i'll cast that as soon as we get down there then um uh don't you need a focus object for that I think I can choose a point or an object. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay, fine. We kill the scary blood spewing monster. You're right. All right. Um, there's only one of those in there. I mean, you only felt one, correct? I only felt the one. Yeah. All right. Um, oh. Somebody push the thing. <laughs> Jazz and I'll go down and see if we can maybe manage to sneak up on it. Well, I mean, the last time you uncovered the portal way in. <laughs> maybe we give it a wide berth this time. <laughs> I, one of you push it out of the way, and I'm going to be here 20 feet above, yeah. and if she, that thing shows its ugly head, I'm just going to blast it. I have another there. 17. So... Are we strength checking now? Is that what we're doing? Yes, you can if you'd like. Am I ready in action to cast Eldritch Blast if this thing does a repeat? Yes. Before it spews blood at people? Yes. Well, I'll push it. I still have a a little bit of my protection from evil spell up. Um, And I I think I have the highest strength score. So (laughs) I will push. I will stay back here. Uh, that is a 16 this time to push. I will say it does take a little bit longer to push, <laughs> probably because you're the only <laughs> one pushing. <laughs> but you do manage to get it out of the way. And as you stare down the cold staircase, the smell of death coming up from below, you hear a distant screech, most likely from that thing. And because it is almost midnight, we're going to end that episode there as you all stare down the staircase into the darkness. Woo. That's like a so, book cover right there. Yeah. <laughs> so you all can join us next week to figure out what they're going to do with the thing under the crypt. And we will see you next week.